The nine to five work day is a myth. Michael McLean, noblebook.com, badassletter.com on a rainy liquid sunshine morning. The show goes on. Nothing stops a badass millionaire, especially something that is connected to your health your number one wealth. 15,000 steps. I'll be back home in 70 minutes. The rest of the day, I can work on other things, but I got to get these 15,000 steps in first thing every morning. I've tried different techniques where I walk second, to, second thing in the morning, sometimes third thing, but I end up missing. So for the last several years, as soon as I get up and throw on my gear, uh, drink my two glasses of water, I'm out the door. I throw on my 25 pound rucking vest that I'm wearing and I'm gone. Walking first works for me. For years I would write then walk, but since I drive Emory to school or summer camp or whatever I'm doing, I, uh, I get these steps in first, then it's done. Health, number one wealth. So, Today I want to talk about the nine to five workday, which is a complete and utter myth in 2022. It's, uh, it's as outdated as the agricultural based school system that our children, the public school system that they're part of, where we shut down our schools for two months in the summer so that the children can help on the farm, bringing in and harvesting the, the crops. That's how outdated the school system is. And that is how outdated the nine to five workday is. The nine to five workday is designed and was designed and is still designed for physical, physical, not mental labor. And it would still apply today if what you're doing is physical labor the majority of the time. You're a contractor, you're a farmer, and if that's the case, you're probably working a seven to uh, a seven to whatever, a lot more than nine to five. But the nine to five workday is as outdated as the public school system summers off. And the reason for that is, is that the majority of people, a person like you, a businessman like you watching this video, the majority of your work is mental. Almost 95% of what you do, like me, is mental work. But here's the thing that's important. You have three to maximum five hours per day that you can work, you can use for deep work, for your magic time, for mental work. There's not a person on earth, there's not a businessman, there's not an entrepreneur. I don't care who you are. I don't care if your last name is Musk, or your last name is Buffett, or your last name is Trump, or your last name is, uh, is, Tom, is, is Brady. I don't care, you don't have more than three to five hours of mental capacity per day. You, if, if you're getting four to five hours of deep work done, mental work done per day, you are a beast. And it's taken me to almost 21 years to get to the point where I can work up to five hours per day on deep work, mental stuff reading, writing, copywriting, uh, sales calls, anything and everything that I use my mind. And I do that very, very rarely. I may have one day a week where I work five, five hours, uh, where I'm working mentally, like I'm doing deep work for five hours. And at the end of that day, I'm mentally and physically exhausted. So when I hear somebody say, well, you know, I work eight to five every day and, and, 
but you're not doing deep work. You're not doing mental work. And here's another thing that's really critical is studies show, and this is an absolute fact, not my opinion. The first three hours of the day, as soon as your eyes open in the morning, the first three hours, no more, no less, are the most productive mental hours that you will have that day. There's no other time. I don't care whether you're a morning person, whether you're not a morning person, I don't care if you get up at five in the morning, I don't care if you get up at eight in the morning. As soon as your eyes are open, the stopwatch starts for productivity. Boom, up you get. So what you decide to use those first three hours of your day is everything to do with the world that you'll build. And 99% of the average and the ordinary and the mediocre, what do they do with that first hour? Well, they lose control in the first 10 minutes. They open up their eyes, they check their phone, they brush their teeth, they have a shower, they return texts and emails, they watch videos, they work on other people's agenda, they check social media, the day is lost and out of control within the first 10 minutes. Every day they rise and they play defense. Every day they rise and play not to lose. You need to be doing the exact opposite, especially in those first golden magic time hours. You have only three hours, three hours of magic time every single day. Not four, not five, don't fool yourself. But what are you going to do? How are you going to invest those glorious first three hours of your day? If you, like I've said many times, if you invest the one hour, just the one hour of time, undivided attention, as soon as you get up, you invest that time in, in writing copy, in writing sales copy, whatever it is, doing something, undisturbed, no technology, sitting down and doing something that will bring you future money, then you're going to make six figures per year. I went from making $30,000 a year, starving, starving, okay, to making, okay, to, to 3 xing my income, to 4 xing my income by sitting my butt down and writing for an hour every single day. That was the very first move that I made that started to transition my world. And I did that almost 20 years ago, where I said, okay, the one discipline I'm gonna instill in my life, besides walking every day, is I'm going to write for one hour. And I started getting up, and I started setting my timer on my desk, on the kitchen table, no technology. I would sit down at my laptop and I would write for one hour, no more, no less. And I would write emails. I would design my websites. I would write copy for postcards. I would design my insurance flyers. Anything and everything that was marketing advertising and promotion related. One hour a day, seven days a week. That was seven hours of writing that I did per week. And before that, I was doing nothing. I wasn't doing any hours per week. So that was a really, really, really important one. So that got me to six figures, making $100,000, $120,000 per year. So when my life went to the next level, I said, okay, I'm going to spend two hours. I'm going to spend two hours per day, per morning, uh, not consecutively, but writing, working on my marketing, all that kind of stuff. And what did that do? That took me, okay, that took me to near seven figures when I was able to put two to three hours of marketing in every single day. So critical, critical importance as far as that kind of stuff goes. So from the time you rise, you have three hours that you need 
to have a system for, a morning ritual, habits, routine, rules, I don't care what you call it. But here's the boom, boom, boom. Three things that I'm going to do with those first three hours of magic time and it needs to be deep work. They need to be the most two, the, the two to three most important actions that you can take every day. Are you with me? To build your world. What are the three things you need to do in the first three hours to consistently build the world of your dreams? As I've shared many times, I dedicate the very first hour and a half of my morning, what I'm doing right now, to walking. It takes me 70 minutes, plus drinking water, plus journaling for five or 10 minutes in the morning. I write down my goals. I write down my gratitude. I pray. I drink a couple glasses of water, one glass of lemon water. I brush my teeth. I put on my rucking vest and I head out the door. For me to walk uh, 15,000 steps takes me 70 minutes plus all the other stuff. We're an hour and a half if I'm on my game. So the first 90 minutes of every single day, no days off, seven days a week, I get up, I get out in nature, I get out in the weather, I get in the cold, I get in the heat, I get in the rain, I get in the snow, solitude. And I'm out here walking day after day, every day, seven days a week, first hour and a half of the day is dedicated to my number one wealth, my number one wealth, my physical and my mental health, both. Walking is both physical and mental health. My number one wealth, health, mental and physical health, I dedicate the first 90 minutes of every single day. Done. Secondly, I head back, drink a couple more glasses of water, and then I usually drive my daughter to school, or in this case, I drive her to summer camp, wherever she's going. Then I'm into the second and third hours of the day. What have I been doing for two decades? I dedicate that next hour to writing, copy, or reading. Doesn't matter which order, depends how I feel that day. But I sit down with my big cup of, big cup of coffee, and I sit down and I read. I set the timer, the old timer. I don't use a cell phone. I don't use a computer. I set the old egg timer. Tick, 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 tick in the next room. And I sit down with a great book, uh, with a newsletter, highlighters, pens, my journal, recipe cards, those index cards, my markers, my Sharpies. And I sit down and I study for an hour, not just read. I study for an hour. I grind out page after page. Sometimes in that hour, I wouldn't read more than 10 or 15 pages because I'm studying the content. If I'm reading a book like Think or Grow Rich or a, a book like Winning or Relentless, I mean, I'm doing a chapter a day maximum. I'm not looking to race through books, I'm looking to study. And I'm taking every distinction and idea and aha that I can get out of it. And I do that for one hour and then boom, I hear my alarm go off in the next room. I get up, I take a 10 minute break and that's the secret. Between these hours, these chunks of, of whatever you're doing for the first three magical hours is you must take breaks. This will extend, this will extend those three to four to five hours. If you're looking for to, to extend your mental capacity, if you're not as mentally focused as you think, then mini breaks and not technology breaks. I don't go and then play on fake book or, or, or check my phone. I do not check my phone until a minimum 11 a.m. and usually not till after lunch. So what do I do for my first break? I drive my daughter to camp or to school. That's an incredible break. I get to connect with her. We talk, we laugh, we joke, we listen to music. That's my 20 minute break. I walk in the coffee house. I, I talk to people. I get out of my vehicle. I stretch my legs. That's my mental break. Then my second break, I always go outside and I always call a friend. One of my really good friends could be my brother, could be a couple of, of uh, allies that I have in business. 
and I walk the property, constantly walking, 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 walking. I'm using the landline. I've got the portable thing, so I'm not touching my cell phone, and I literally get some more steps in. I'm out in the sunshine. I'm out in the fresh air. I've changed my environment, and I'm walking and talking, walking and talking, and I'm talking, socializing, because I'm working by myself all the time. I find this incredibly... Uh, motivating and inspirational just to talk to a good friend. And then after that 10 minutes, boom, I'm into the third activity, which is copywriting or reading, depending upon the order of that day. But well, let's say copywriting. So what's my number one marketing uh, goal? What's the number one thing I have to do for this company to move the needle? And then I do that. That's, that's I have that already up on my laptop. So when I turn on my laptop for the first time, that Word document pops up. Sometimes it's a blank sheet. Okay, I gotta write an email today. Every day I write you an email. Well, guess when I do that? I do that one day before. So the first thing I do is I open up my laptop and, uh, and I put that, I do that email. And that's every day, 365. And uh, then that's done with. So then I move to another copy. Okay, I need to uh, work on uh, writing copy for the newsletter. So I'll sit down and write one article for the newsletter. And then when that's done, if I still have time, I may, you know, write a, a telegram. So these are the weekly telegrams, the physical telegrams that I send to my platinum level newsletter subscribers. They actually get a, they actually get a physical paper and ink telegram from me every single week with one of my most advanced ideas. So uh, that's, that's what I do in that first hour. So there, and then I take a break. I take a 10 minute break. Uh, sometimes that, at that point, it's, it's 11 o'clock. That's when I'll check my phone for the first time. That's when I'll check my email for the first time. Uh, but I've got my three big things in. I've used those first three hours, the most productive hours of any person's day, including yours, I've invested those. I haven't made excuses. I've walked, I've moved my body, I've stretched, I've got out in the sunshine. So that's my mental and physical health checked off. Then my reading, which is my mind, my growth, my study, I've done that. And then my copywriting, which is my marketing, my adver advertising and my promotions of my companies. So I got those three things done. I've got a day's work done, are you kidding me? by 11 a.m. because I invested those first three hours. To hell with nine to five. Nine to five is for chumps. Nine to five is for people that work in a cubicle. Nine to five is for people that work paycheck to paycheck. Nine to five is for a bureaucrat or a paper pusher or somebody that works for somebody. But nine to five is not for an entrepreneur or a badass leader or a businessman. Are you kidding me? And here's the thing that I've preached for a number of years. After you've done your mental work, those first three hours of the day, those first three hours a day, then you can do whatever the hell you want. That's why I call it half day discipline. If you get up every single day of your life, no days off, and you walk and you write and you read, you will be so far ahead of anybody else, it will be unbelievable. Your wife and your children will watch you transform in front of them over six months, 12 months, two years, no days off. And then you know what? I call the rest of the day conquering the chaos. So then you can introduce the chaos into your life. In the, in the, you can have your lunch, you can go to the dentist, you can go to the chiropractor, you can return your emails, you can return your phone calls, you can do paperwork, you can get in a fight with your wife. I don't give a shit what you do, but you protect it those first golden, absolutely golden hours of the day, which are the first three. You're crazy if you touch your cell phone in the first three hours of the day. You're playing to lose. You're just pretending to win. If you touch your cell phone, if your cell phone is in your bedroom, then you're just pretending. And I'll tell you another thing too. If you count on willpower for any of this, if you count on willpower not to use your phone, if you count on willpower to drink water, if you count on willpower 
uh, to put your clothes and your shoes on in the morning. If you count willpower to have to, you know, to sit down and write for an hour with no distraction. If you count on willpower to read, or if you count on willpower to, to walk every day, you know what? You're a fucking pretender. You are a pretender because willpower does not work. We have a saying in pro sports where I come from, willpower is for chumps. Willpower is for chumps, okay? Environment, environment is for champions. I'm gonna say that again. If you're counting on willpower to do anything in your life, to change a behavior, to in institute an activity, to quit drinking, to quit smoking, to quit you know, social media, quit watching the main street news, to quit something that's no longer serving you, and you're counting on willpower, you are an imposter. You are a pretender, and you're not serious about changing. You're lying to yourself, you're lying to your wife, you're lying to your kids. The only thing that matters in winning, in changing a behavior, the only thing that matters is environment. Environment. Change your environment, change your life. Change your environment, change a bad habit. Change your environment, change your entire world. So if you want to accomplish something in these first three hours, what's your environment? How are you going to change your environment? Okay, I cannot not walk in the morning because of my environment. I just simply can't. I have rules, I have habits, I have rituals. I get up, I trip over my clothes, my shoes are at the door. I cannot not walk. I would have to work hard to not walk each morning. Everything is ready. My rocking vest is ready. My video camera is ready. My lemon water is let, let, I, ready. I could not not walk. It's that simple. So I've set my environment up to win. I'm not fucking lying to myself. I'm not pretending. I'm not depending on useless willpower. I've set up my environment where I walk every single day, seven days a week. How do you think I walk on Saturdays and Sundays when most people have their ass in their bed? Because I've set up my environment. My environment's the same on Sunday as it is on Tuesday. So why would I have any difference? I don't, willpower doesn't work. Understand that. Oh, Michael, I tried for two days and then I gave up because you used willpower. You're not serious about changing. You're not serious about winning. Champions use environment. Chumps use willpower. Secondly, when it comes to my, comes to my reading, I put out my book the night before. I lay it out where I'm gonna, where I'm gonna read privately. I, I, nobody's gonna bother me. I've got solitude. I don't have a phone with me. It could be the end of the dock. It could be the boat. I could be in my truck. I've got my pens and, and my uh, recipe index cards laid out the night before. So my environment is built for reading. I have about five different places in my world that I read. And if one of them is interrupted, I just go to the next. For years, I've hopped in my vehicle and gone and read for an hour somewhere. When we're camping or whether we're on a vacation, sometimes I'll just leave and go and sit in the truck and read. But I control my environment. I don't sit there with kids and distractions and in Starbucks and, and with my phone and expect to study and read. I set up a, an environment, a world of champions. So when I get up, when I get back from this walk and I get into the Mastermind House World Headquarters in town, guess what's waiting for me on my, in my chair? Okay, the place is empty. I've got beautiful, beautiful windows in the place with fresh air and sunshine on most days. I got one thing to read. I got a book and the highlighters and the pens. I sit down with my piping cup of coffee and I do one thing. I read, I read. I don't look around, where's my book? Holy shit, I don't have my pens. Like, holy Christ, a amateur hour with everything. You're stumbling and bumbling around and you wonder why the hell you can't win. Why the hell you can't put a single day together without, oh, I couldn't do it. Can't means won't. Can't means won't. Every time you say those words, it's a message to you, a message to your brain, a message to your wife, a message to your kids that you won't do it. If you're serious about it, you'll change your environment. 
If you're not serious, you'll continue to tell this silly, childish story, and you'll continue to use willpower. Champions change their environment. Talkers use willpower. Third thing when I go to it is to sit down and write. You know how I sit down and write? I slip a piece of paper in my MacBook Pro the night before. So when I finally open my MacBook Pro as my third thing in, the, in these golden hours, these first three hours, I'm going to write for an hour. I go in, I take a break, I come back inside, I'm going to sit down, I'm going to write for an hour. I open up my MacBook and guess what's waiting? The one piece of paper on it that has what I'm going to write about. Boom, one thing. That's what I'm going to write about. I'm going to write an email to you. If that's the case, then that's the one thing that's in there. Today, I'm going to be writing a script on a, on a new YouTube ad. So what do you think when I open up my, my laptop? What do you think the piece of paper, the only thing, it's actually inside the laptop that's waiting for me? My script that I have to type out and I have to practice and I have to send for my next YouTube ad and I'm gonna write another email for tomorrow. That's it, I open up my laptop, I sit in complete solitude, there's absolutely nothing else that is uh, that I have to do. Um, I've got um, nothing else on the desk, I've got a glass of water, and what I do is I put my fingers on, those key on the keyboard, and boom, I start, work I start writing. And I set the timer for 60 minutes, and the rest is history. Every day, day after day, no excuses. So in all three cases, in walking, in writing, and in reading, I have done one thing. I have controlled my environment. I have not counted on willpower whatsoever. I get up in the dark, my clothes are ready, my shoes are ready, my ball cap's ready. I go down in the kitchen, my, my water is ready, my lemons are ready, uh, my rucking vest is at the door. Uh, I've, I mean, I've, I've, my environment is supporting my behavior. And then the same with reading and writing, my laptop. The one thing, it can be, a, it can be I, I write in Word, so it's, an, it's a blank Word document, or it would be a newsletter document, or a Telegram document, or a fax document, or an email document. Whatever I'm writing that day, as soon as I open up my MacBook Pro, that's the thing waiting for me on the screen. And I control my environment with my phone and with uh, my laptop. I have no apps on any of those things that have access to any of the swamps that I talk about. So no, I can't get on ESPN. No, I can't get on Facebook. No, I can't get on Twitter. I don't even have an account for that. Instagram, I've never been on there. Um, TikTok, I don't have access to any of that stuff. But I don't trust myself. I make it next to impossible for me to misbehave. That's what changing your environment is all about, making it impossible to misbehave. I don't trust myself to willpower. I don't trust myself to walk. I don't trust myself to read good books for an hour every day. And I, don't, I certainly don't trust myself to sit down and write copy and marketing every single day. So instead of trusting myself, I set up environments. I set up an environment, even if I have to leave, even if I have to leave where I am, to control it, I, I set up an environment so that I protect those golden three hours of every day. We only have three productive hours a day, four and five to do deep work, but maximum those first three hours are golden. So I set up that first four to five hours of each day where I can't misbehave. It's almost impossible for Michael to misbehave. I'm gonna drink the right things, I'm gonna think the right things, I'm gonna read, I'm gonna write, I'm gonna walk. And I lock away my phone, I don't touch it until lunchtime and, and I'm controlling my environment. That's how champions operate, not with willpower. Willpower doesn't work. Write that on the back of your hand. Willpower doesn't work and it's for amateurs. Okay, champions, it's about environment. When you go through these locker rooms of incredible teams through history, whether it's uh, whether it's uh, you know Nick Saban's locker room, go through his locker room and compare it to other mediocre teams and programs. Go through Bill Belichick's locker room. Go through you know the Colorado Avalanche locker room. Go through the Tampa Bay Lightning's locker room. Go through uh, you know go through Tom Brady's home and not not the mansion stuff, but you go through that environment and see what's in that environment. 
You think his you think his fridge is full of uh, Pepsi and Coke and beer? Do you think it's it's full of high energy drinks? What do you think? Do you think Tom Brady's house is is full of iPads and and cell phones, or do you think it's full of books? You know, it's just everything that matters in environment because environment is what makes a champion. So that's it. The uh, the nine to five. Get that right out of your mind. It's a complete and utter myth. It doesn't apply to you as an entrepreneur or as a badass businessman. Remember, those first three hours have to be scripted every day of your life. They're the most important. So no doctor's appointments, no, you know, uh, doing this, no field trips. Like even our vacations this summer, Krista, I, like we have a rule, don't touch any, don't book anything for me until 11 a.m. After 11 a.m., I'm, I'm here. I can, I can do anything. I can take Emery to the horse barn. I can do this. I can go on a boat trip. I can do anything like that because I have a seamless life. But I protect those first three hours of the morning like they mean everything because they do. I'm not sitting at a dentist office or I'm not renewing my car license at 10 o'clock in the morning. Those first few hours of the day, for me, it's 5.59 to 11 a.m. I won't even do a podcast. Like Leanne was asking you, Michael, what, what do you want to do with these podcast requests? I said, I'm available anytime after 11 a.m. I'm in the process. I have a potential buyer uh, for the barbershop. He's going to come and he's going to meet me next week. And what's the one rule? I said, I can meet you any day after 11 a.m. So I'll have all my activities done and I'll go meet this gentleman at 11 o'clock. I won't be stressed. It's the chaos of the day. It's part of the chaos and I'm done. And then the final piece, you know, you own your morning, you win your morning and you deal with the chaos of the afternoon. And chaos is part of business. If you don't have chaos in your business, I don't know what kind of business you're running. You know, success is a messy kitchen, but the messy kitchen needs to be in the afternoon. The messy kitchen is after lunch. And then of course, the most important part is investing time with the people that matter the most to you in the evenings. There should be no work at home. There should be zero. It's a terrible trigger to have. It's a terrible thing for you to go back and forth and to work from home unless you have a very specific home office. But other than that, you need to shut it off when dinner, six o'clock, five o'clock, whatever, and the evenings belong to your best friend, your secret weapon wife, your children, your grandchildren, and they belong to you too, mentally, to take a break. You shouldn't be checking in emails or, or, or looking for texts or being on social media. That shit makes you look so needy. That stuff, if you're working at night, you know what that says to a guy like me? It means that you don't have your act together. It makes you look like you're out of control. It makes you look the opposite of a badass world builder. It makes you look like everybody else, okay? Tomato cans work at night. Tomato cans work at home at night. Um, like that, that's the, that's the behavior of the poor. You're working after 6 p.m., that's the behavior of the poor. Top one percenters, they work at six in the morning, seven in the morning, eight in the morning, nine in the morning, 10 in the morning, and their magic time is over and then they can, they can deal with the chaos of the day. They can deal. I won't even let anybody come to my home before 11, like to fix the hot tub or to fix the pool or to fix the sea dew or any of that stuff. Krista books, all that stuff after 11. I, I guard those first five hours of the day like, like a, a, a warden would guard a prison. It's just everything. And that, uh, that's why I call it half day discipline. So if you enjoy that message and you want to level up, you want to start punching above your weight. Uh, I have a few spots left in my upcoming year long mastermind. If you're actually serious, like changing your environment, you're not a willpower pretender. You're actually serious and you want to change your environment. Well, what's the number one way you change your environment? The number one way you change your environment is change the people that you spend time with. You and I are the average of the five people we spend the most time with, right? So guess what? How are you going to up-level your life and your world if you keep hanging out with the same people? Books are great. These videos are great. But they won't up-level your life to top one, one percent. 
And that's what masterminds do. It's not what happens in the mastermind, it's who you meet. You know, it's who you meet, it's who you get to know that really is the power of a mastermind. That's where you get the 10X. That's where you get the 10X, the people that you meet and the time you save by leveling up. So if, you, if you're in need of upgrading your social circle, there's no better way to do it than hang out with 14 other cleaners, closers, ballers, and champions. You'll automatically get better by environment. Willpower, if you're going to try and do this all on your own, that's willpower. Well, Michael, I'm going to try and do this on my own, and I'm going to listen to this podcast, and, and the videos are inspirational, but are you kidding me? If you want to go all in, none of this toe in the water, if you want to go all in, then a mastermind needs to be part of your life. I don't care if it's my mastermind or somebody else's. I really don't care. I don't care if you put one together on your own, but you need to up-level your associations. The people you're hanging with need to be better people. It's just the way it is. You need to constantly be curating, cutting the rope, swift sorting, and upgrading your social circle. If you want to make a million dollars a year, you need to absolutely hang out with millionaires. If you want to hang, if you want to make, you know, a couple million dollars a year, you want to build your business to $10 million, $25 million, well, you need to start hanging out with like-minded businessmen who have already done that and are continuing to do it. And because of environment, it'll become automatic for you. It'll become the new normal. It'll become the new normal because environment's that power, powerful. If you just want to use willpower, well, that's a tough grind. That's a tough grind. My life changed. My life changed, like I said many times, when I went to these $30,000 masterminds that I was in. I became a small fish in a big pond. And I was forced by environment to, pu to punch above my weight, which I did. Uh, BadassChampion.com applied, it's $50,000. Ask the right question. How, how much more can I make by being part of this? How much can I up-level my social circle by being part of this? How, how many great friends and associates and contacts can I make by being a part of this? How can this help me 10x my world? Those are the questions to ask when it comes to books and, and uh, videos and podcasts and coaching programs and masterminds. Not how much does it cost. Is this something that can 10x my life? Is this something that can 25x my world? Those are the questions. And if it is, the ROI is there. What, who cares what the price is if you, have a, if you have an abundance mindset? Like if I hand you, if I say, okay... I, you need, if you give me $10,000 and I'm going to hand you back a hundred grand, are you going to take that deal? Of course you're going to take that deal. And that's the return on investment on webs on uh, masterminds. Like you can't be in a mastermind of mine. My guys don't even know this, but I insist you 10 X your world in the year or you're not invited back. So when you hand me 50 K, it's like you handing me 50 K and I'm saying to you, Okay, I'm going to hand you back a check now for 500k at the end of the year. That's what 10xing is all about. So if you don't take that deal, then you must be suffering from mental illness because $50,000 for 500 because I insist my guys, I don't care if a guy's making a million dollars. I say he needs to 10x his income, he needs to 10x his marriage, he needs to 10x his relationship with his kids in the 12 months that I work with him. If he can't or he won't, Better word, word won't. He's not coming back the next year. I don't want guys uh, that, that, that are willpower guys. I want guys that build their environment. And, you know, I want guys that, that, that make it across the line. I want, even if I got to drag them. So give that some thought. Do you want, do you want to 10X your world? You really want to 10X your world? You really want to keep counting on willpower? Or do you want to, um, you know, to execute the power of environment into your life, hanging out with the best of the best so that you have no choice any longer but to 10x your life, to 25x your world. Badasschampion.com. That's it. That's all. Do what I do every day. Hug and uh, hug your wife and children and tell them how much they mean to you. They are everything, absolutely everything. Where would we be 
as leaders, as kings, uh, you know, as closers without our secret weapons and our children and your grandchildren. It's absolutely the most important thing we do every single day. It can be a small note in, the, in their lunch. It can be a, a post-it note on the bathroom mirror, slip a note in their, in their, uh, uh, in their book, uh, whatever it is, send them a text if that's all you can do. Uh, but, but eye to eye, you know, in the kitchen, in the dining room, whatever, just telling your kids and your wife that uh, how much they mean to you. Um, Emery's working on a dream board right now, a vision board, and she's cutting things out of magazines, all of her dreams. And it all started by me asking her at dinner four days ago at dinner. We, uh, we, I said, I said, sweetheart, what are your top five dreams? What are your top five dreams? Ask that of your children and your, and your spouse. I know guys that make $10 million a year. They're on their third marriage, fourth marriage. They've drank themselves through it all, checked out, but, they, but they're successful with you know, money. They don't, have, they don't have a clue what their best friend's dreams are. They don't have a clue what their wife's dreams are. They don't have a clue what their son or daughter's dreams are. And it's sad because it's all about them. Make sure that as a leader of your family, as the king of your kingdom, that you're constantly asking your wife and children, what is your dream? What is your dream? They support us in ours, but what is their dream? And then ask the question, how can I help you make that happen? It's not about spending money. It's not about any of that. How can I make you ha that happen? My, uh, my, daughter, uh, my daughter Emery said, I need paper and I need some of your magazines to take pictures out. When I asked her, what's your dream? What are your five dreams? And then she said, Daddy, I need uh, tape and I need some magazines for photos. So she has my Sports Illustrated photos. She has my Forbes magazines to get photos. So she's got islands and horses and dogs and cats. And uh, she wants to go to Africa. So these are the kind of things. So she's got this big piece of Bristol board and she's got my dreams at the top in crayon. And she's been working on this for two days because at the kitchen table, we, I asked the question, what is your dream? And then I asked Krista, I said, what is, your, what is your dream? And Krista told me something like, we have a great connection. She told me something I didn't even know about because I wasn't asking the right question. So ask your wife and your children. Uh, this is what the dinner, dinner, roll table, dinner table is for. This is what the lunch table is for. What are your dreams? Because they support us doing ours. And then there's my nine-year-old putting up a dream board in her, uh, in her room. God, I mean, life is about dreams. I mean, what else is there? So ask your, your secret weapon, what is her dream? She's been supporting yours for 20, 30, 40 years. What's your children's dreams? They're, they're in their teenage years. They're 20. They're 30 years old. Dreaming is so important. They've probably given up on a lot of their dreams. They've probably you know, push their, a lot of their dreams away. And it's more important as they get older. What is your dream? What are your dreams? What do you want to accomplish? How can I help you? How can we set some goals? How can we set some timelines? How can we, how can I help you make this happen? And it's never about money, never about money. They have to achieve their own dream themselves, but you can help them with the roadmap, help them with the roadmap. That's it. Two words that change my life two words that can change your life if you'll change your environment. Be relentless.